The purpose of this video is to discuss needle depth, how to check it, and how to adjust it. Some of the reasons you would even consider adjusting or checking the needle depth would be issues with sewing, such as one needle out of the 15 needles not sewing as well as the others, shredding of thread, thread breaks, thread not picking up after trims or color changes, or just poor sewing quality all around. If the issue is all needles are sewing poorly or not picking up after color changes or trims, then the issue is very unlikely to be needle depth. Needle depth would be something that would need to be checked or adjusted after, say, striking a hoop or having a bird nest or some other kind of malfunction of the machine. And then following clearing that malfunction, that needle not sewing correctly, whereas all the rest of the needles still do. So again, if the machine sews poorly on all needles of the machine, it's unlikely to be the needle depth, particularly if the machine was sewing fine previously. So, determining whether or not you need to check or adjust the needle depth might come about by a couple of different ways. Perhaps you've called the service line and they've suggested that the needle depth on that particular needle might be incorrect. Or you've hit a hoop or broken a needle or something else has happened on one particular needle and that needle and that needle alone starts sewing poorly. If that's the case, then you will want to proceed with checking, uh, inspecting to see whether or not the needle depth is correct. To inspect the needle depth, first remove the bobbin case. Then pushing in the manual wheel on the right hand side of the embroidery machine and turning the machine, you're going to cycle the machine one full rotation until the needle picks up and starts coming down and then you will stop when it reads 180 degrees through the sight window on the right hand side of the machine just in front of the wheel that you're turning. At this point you should be able to notice by looking into the rotary hook that the needle is down below and visible inside the place where the bobbin normally goes you should be able to see about one half of the eye of the needle. So when you look in there, you may need a flashlight to look in and see whether or not you can see any of the eye of the needle. If you can see all of the eye of the needle or none of the eye of the needle, then you will need to take the next step to checking your needle depth. So this is just a quick look to see if the needle depth is even close. Again, you should be able to see approximately one half of the eye of the needle. Any more or any less, and it's likely that the needle depth for this particular needle is incorrect. To check it more precisely, you'll need a six millimeter Allen key. With the machine still at 180 degrees, you'll take the Allen key and place it on top of the spindle where the rotary, uh, of the rotary hook where the bobbin case goes with the bobbin. When you slide it in there nice and straight, what you should get is a slight scratching of the needle on the flat upper surface of the six millimeter Allen key. If you've got that little slight scratching, then you know that the needle depth is correct. You want to make sure that you don't put the Allen key in at an angle either down or up, that you use the flat part of the Allen key on top of the spindle so that the flat opposite side of it is also underneath the needle. So you place it in there and you should be able to have just a slight scratching of the needle on the, on the top side of the six millimeter Allen key. If you can't fit the six millimeter Allen key in between the spindle of the rotary hook and underneath the needle, then your needle depth is too deep. Again, making sure that you're at 180 degrees or bottom dead of the looking through the sight window on the right hand side of your embroidery machine. If the needle does not touch 
the, t the surface of the six millimeter Allen key, then the needle depth is too shallow. In either case, it will need to be adjusted. If you have determined by your inspection that you need to adjust the needle depth, you're going to need a few tools. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll be removing this screw and this screw in order to take off the check spring assembly, as well as this screw and this screw in order to remove the face plate here. This bottom face, face plate just slides out, and we'll demonstrate that in a moment. So you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a three millimeter Allen key, a six millimeter Allen key that we're gonna use as a depth gauge. First step is, unfortunately, unthreading the machine. So you'll remove the thread from the needles. Then slide the lower face plate out. Next, we're going to unthread the check spring assembly. And then we're going to remove the check spring assembly. Finally, we're going to re remove the upper face plate. Okay, so. Now what you're looking at are the individual needle bars. Cross. These are your presser foot height adjustments. You shouldn't have to adjust this at all. The way we're going to adjust needle depth is on the needle that we need to adjust, in this case it's needle number eight, we're going to be adjusting the lower of these two clamps. This is called the needle bar boss. If you adjust the needle depth by adjusting this lower one, the needle bar boss, you will also have to correspondingly adjust the upper stop position, which is the upper clamp that you see. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Again, we're going to put the machine to 180 degrees. So we're pushing in and turning until the needle cycles down to 180. By viewing it through the sight window on the right hand side of the machine. Then we're going to use our three millimeter Allen key to loosen the needle bar boss, which is down here, the lower of the two clamps. When it's loose, you'll now be able to push the needle bar up or pull the needle bar down in order to adjust the needle bar depth. So with the needle bar boss clamp loosened, as you move this, you can pull it up or down in order to set the needle depth. At that point in time, with it loose, you're going to use your 6 millimeter Allen key to again rest on top of the spindle of the rotary hook, making sure it's flat against it, slide it underneath the needle, and then you're going to adjust the pressure foot, excuse me, your needle bar up or down in order to get that light scratching touch of the tip of the needle on the surface of your six millimeter Allen key. Once you set the depth, 
we'll go ahead and tighten the uh, needle bar boss clamp, but not really tight, just make sure it's really snug, okay? All right, so that's setting the needle bar depth. Now, once you've set the needle bar depth, you now have to adjust your upper stop position. 180 degrees is your lower dead position, so correspondingly, zero degrees is your up position. So you're going to cycle the machine until you read zero degrees through your sight window. And then you're going to loosen the upper stop. Let it drop a little bit. Make sure you're still at 180, or excuse me, at zero degrees. And then you're going to raise it back up until it's uh, against the upper part. And then you're going to push down just slightly on the needle bar. There's just a little bit of play there while this isn't, while the uh, upper stop position uh, is loose. So you're going to push down just slightly and then push up until it's against the top. Don't squeeze it really hard. Just make sure it's snug against the top. Make sure that that uh, Allen key is pointing straight out so that your upper, uh, upper stop clamp is straight. Snug it. And then again, snug it a little bit here. Not too tight, just nice and snug. At that point in time, you've, up, you've set your lower, uh, from 180 degrees, you set your needle depth using the six millimeter Allen key as your depth gauge. And then we went to zero degrees to set our upper stop position uh, using the upper stop clamp. Okay, once you've accomplished setting your lower needle depth, and your upper stop, it's time to reassemble the machine. You can cycle the machine to 100 degrees, either manually or by hand. 100 degrees is the natural stop position for the machine, so anytime it stops for a color change or trim, it stops at 100. The needle should be up. There's a little release on the side to release that, but if you cycle it with the machine, it'll automatically leave the needle bar up. Okay? And then we'll retrace our steps assembling the machine. Your face plate will go back on the machine. Make sure that the little notch that's on the uh, determines the back. There's a little notch right here. That's the back. This is the front. Put it in the front. Don't trap any of your thread behind that. I'm just going to make sure I've got all my thread loose so it won't get trapped behind my face, face plate. I'm going to start reinstalling it with my Phillips head screws. Don't put them tight, just put them in so that it holds it in place. We'll tighten them once we put our check spring guide back in. There's our check spring bar. Again, I want to make sure I don't trap any thread behind any of the components here. Once I've tightened the lower two screws, I'm going to tighten the upper two screws. Then I'm going to replace the face plate by sliding it behind. There's a little notch right there to slide it behind the check spring bar right there. And then sliding it into place. It's just held into place by magnetics. <coughs> 